My job as a YP, that's a young prisoner, was taking the empty food trays out of each cell. So what used to happen was the screw would open up about three cells in a row. And so I would go in then and, and just get the, the empty food tray, the prisoner would hand it out to me. So it was, I, I was perfectly placed doing that job um, to um, set up my attack of this guy. So he, there was an IRA prisoner in the cell next to me and, and my fear was that he would attack me. And so I thought, I'm gonna attack him before he attacks me. And so what I planned to do was stab him, scold him, or throw him over the, the landing. And so I was planning this attack the first time that I met him. And so I was really, you know, I was only a kid, I was a teenager basically, and I was a bit afraid because I didn't know what to expect. And then when the screw opened the door and I saw him, it was incredible because he was, uh, he weighed about five stone and he looked like a child in a man's clothes because all, all of his clothes were too big for him and he was just like skin and bone inside his clothes and um, any anger that I had just turned to compassion for this man because he was he was killing himself he was dying in front of my eyes and he could smell death you can smell it when people are dying and um, so we we began to have a dialogue and uh, he said to me, you're from Belfast. And I said, yes, but I'm not one of yours. So he said to me, look, you're a bright kid. You shouldn't be wasting your time in here. And, and it was him, Frank Stagg, his name was. He was the IRA hunger striker on the 44th day of his hunger strike. Weighed five stones when I met him. Um, so it was meeting my enemy in prison that had a transformational effect upon my life, basically, because I went to the prison library that night and I got a book from the shelf, it was John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, and I read about Tom Jode, who was an ex-prisoner, he'd just come out of prison, and um, that book brought me back to my own humanity, I found my own humanity again reading that book, I remember weeping at the end of it, at the generosity in that book. I got shipped out of that prison, and went to a young person's prison. And um, about, this was in February of that year, um, and then I, I was looking at a newspaper in a bin, and I looked, it was about three days old, and it, it just said uh, Frank Stagg died on, on hunger strike. And I can't believe it, you know, this guy, when he was um, so near death, had the time to try and turn me away from a life of crime, basically, and violence. And uh, I mean, it's basically to that guy that I owe um, the, the change in my life. You know, the, my enemy became my teacher. The cell wasn't like this. Um, you know, in his cell, everything would have been taken out because he was, he was uh, on hunger strike. He was breaking their law. Uh, so he would have been on a charge. And the only thing that was in this cell when, uh, when he was here was he had a newspaper on the floor and he used to lie on the newspaper and it was a piss pot, a newspaper and um, a Bible. That was the only things in his cell. And, um, and, and the hot food that I was bringing into his cell and taking out the empty food. And I felt really, really, really bad about that because I was bringing in hot food when this man was starving and it was hot steaming food, you could smell it, you, you know. And I felt really, really bad about that. But um, he never touched any of his food. Nothing was ever touched. Be I was in a cell next door to him, and I used to bang on the wall and say to him, look, I've got some food here if you want to have some food. You know, they don't have to know about it. I can get you some food. It'll keep you alive. And he said, thanks, but no, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. And why he was on hunger strike was he wanted to be repatriated. He wanted to serve his time in Ireland. Because this was in England when we were in jail in the 70s. And um, so, you know, he died on hunger strike. But it's thanks to Frank Stagg that, you know, I've been able to do what I do now. Because starting the SC and doing prison Shakespeare is all down to that man, is all down to Frank Stagg. So without him, you know, my, my life wouldn't have, I would probably still be in, in and out of jail.
you know, I wouldn't have found education. I wouldn't have found my own humanity. So it was meeting him, my enemy, and him being humane to me, uh, even though I was his enemy, and I'd gone there with murder in my heart, you know, to hurt him because I was afraid of him. But it was ignorance, basically. It was ignorance. I was taught, I was brought up to, to hate Catholics, to hate Republicans, and to think that they were all my enemy. And, uh, and actually meeting this guy changed my mind, totally changed my mind. And uh, they're human beings, and you know they have a they had a legitimate struggle, and um, you know it was just a, it was an amazing transformational experience. So um, yeah, thanks to him that I'm standing here today talking to you.